Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. This video is sponsored by Southern New Hampshire University and their online Bachelor of Science in Computer Game Programming. More on that later. When I was a child, I spent some summers with my maternal grandparents in a small town in the middle of Missouri. That's Missouri to most of you. And I love picking up on all the Midwestern colloquialisms. And I still use them to season my writing, particularly when writing in character as Ray. And one of their favorite ones was when someone said something that was either irrelevant or excessively abstract was to retort, and what does that have to do with the price of potatoes? Note that Missourians generally pride themselves in being called the show-me state for their focus on demonstrative results. So when I, in a prior video, promised to delve into the potential problems and alternatives to Tony Zerovic's quantum economic system, which I nicknamed Zeronomics, this old bit of Midwestern wisdom returned because literally that is the main thing we are looking for in an economic system. What is the price of potatoes? Or laranite, or helium, or whatever. The invisible machinations behind it are, well, sort of irrelevant. Which is why when we had the limited rollout of Zeronomics and the only visibility of it were the highly limited commodity price alerts, it was, well, underwhelming. And having seen no movement beyond that, no mention of Tony or Quanta at either of the last two season cons, Benoit Bozinger's statement that Quanta was not being worked on at the moment, and the recent ISC on the economics team neither including nor mentioning Tony Z, I deducted that Zeronomics had hit the wall on scalability, because that is the wall that really ambitious things often meet their fate against. But as some pointed out, I have no insider information, and I should consider the fact that I could be completely wrong on this, and despite all these factors, that it has no problem. Okay, where are those custom med pens that Astro Chronicles whipped up? Oh, okay, quantum economics has only been waiting on cargo missions to be in the game because that is how quanta will be moving goods around, and as soon as we get cargo missions in 3.23, it will be completely unblocked, and we'll get everything we need to know about the state of the economy displayed as layers on the new star map. And not only that, but, 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 oh heck, it's worn off. I must be developing tolerance from too much exposure. Benoit Bozinger's statement and the latest ISC would have been entirely different if that was the case. So I should backtrack for those more recent to the project and describe what is the quantum economic system and how did it get started. It started with a still valid goal from Chris Roberts that players should influence the economics of the game but should not dominate or manipulate them because players should represent no more than, he said, 1 in 10 ships in the game. Which leads to the question, what are the other 9 ships doing? Zerovic came up with the most direct answer. That was to create hundreds of thousands of bots who would literally be playing the game in the background, making the same kind of decisions and actions as the player would, but only becoming visible and present in the game when crossing paths with a player. The challenge, though, was that in order to work, the 100,000 processes had to be lightweight, and the game was simple back then. Only a few dozen potential routes, a handful of commodities, and only two career choices being considered, being a pirate or being a trader. As of the time of Tony Zerovec's last video on the project, they were just beginning on the algorithms to have the quanta also choose to be miners, and thus be able to make the choice between a trader, be a pirate, or be a miner. Now, since then, the number of commodities have increased, and the number of commodities increases the number of possibilities linearly. The number of locations has greatly increased, which increases the number of possibilities exponentially, and will continue to increase exponentially with the addition of more star systems like Pyro and beyond. And now a full implementation of player decision making would also need to include the possibilities of becoming a trader, pirate, miner, salvager, and tower. Moreover, as the scope of the physical verse keeps getting larger, not only are there more possible routes, but if a bot takes a choice of an hours long trip to its desired action in another system, then you have to have more of them, because the bot only really touches supply and demand in the verse when it takes actions and decisions, and bots taking long trips make fewer decisions. The thing is, we don't want Star Citizen to be a lightweight game, and it increasingly isn't. And so a bot to simulate playing it can't be simple anymore, and those maintaining the bot code would have to be constantly chasing increases in the gameplay depth. That is why I suspect that the problem is that the bot-driven model can't scale to the evolving scope of the game. Which, on the topic of complex decisions, segues to the message from our video's sponsor, the online Bachelor of Science computer game program from Southern New Hampshire University. And the complex question is, 
is an online college as good as a physical one, which is why I have talked about accreditation in prior videos. An online degree from SNHU does not have an asterisk. It does not have anything in parentheses in the school name or the degree name. Heck, I'm told if you really care about parading around in a cap and gown in a graduation ceremony, you can actually do that. Because SNHU isn't just a virtual school. It has a real campus just north of Manchester, the one in New Hampshire, of course, not the one where CIG is located, along the Merrimack River with beautiful buildings and unique opportunities such as an eSports arena team and scholarships. And the physical university also has a reputation for being radically affordable compared to other private universities. So if you have the luxury of being able to retreat for a few years into a bucolic college town, then by all means take it. But let's be real, not everyone's situation includes that luxury. But it does open up hybrid possibilities. Up to 90 units of a 120-unit degree can be transfer credits. So you get your general core at an affordable local college, which would get you the side benefits of a peer group, resources, good internet, and a quiet place to study, while parallel completing the major classes online at, say, SNHU. It also means an opportunity if you have a partially completed degree that had to be abandoned for whatever reason that could be turned into a marketable STEM degree. If this is intriguing, then go to snhu.edu slash raise guide to fill out the form and talk to a real person about transfer credit possibilities or really any other question. That's snhu.edu slash raise guide. Now, back to the subject of the game economy. And if the ultimate problem of zeronomics being too complex to scale with the scope of the verse, then the focus of offering a suggestion has to begin with radically simplifying the presumptions. And I am going to call this radically simplified system rayonomics to emphasize that this is just my own thought processes and a suggestion, not any sort of demand that this is what CIG or Star Citizen has to do. Because the fundamental presumption of zeronomics was that the quanta were analogs to us players. But what if they aren't? What if we, the players, are the rogues of the verse? The adventurers, the freelancers, the vagabonds, the explorers, the pioneers, the drifters, the trailblazers. And what if the quanta aren't? What if the quanta are employees? You don't have to model the decision-making of employees because employees don't really have much decision-making. You only then have to model corporate decision-making. You've gone from having to simulate hundreds of thousands of individuals to modeling a handful of industrial corporations. If the shipping company needs more pilots, then they're presumed to hire more people or pay overtime or whatever. If the mining company needs fewer miners, then they're presumed to have layoffs or reduced hours. You don't have to model whether some individual miner has decided to become a cargo pilot because what does that have to do with the price of potatoes? Also, while individual hand solos are looking for opportunistic point-to-point -point routes, the big shippers, for efficiency purposes, have standardized routes. So, for example, let's say I need to send an urgent package from here to, let's say, someone at CIG headquarters in Manchester, the one in England, not the one where SNHU is, using UPS. They are not going to send a brown truck from my location to Manchester, England, even if that was possible. No, they're going to send a brown truck from my location to the nearest UPS sort facility in Southern California, then uh, via a big rig to the big UPS airport facility at ONT, where they would be put on a plane to East Midlands Airport near Nottingham, where they would be put on an Arctic lorry to Liverpool sort facility, and then on a brown van to CIG headquarters. And that process would be followed, no matter who in Southern California was sending no matter what to no matter who in the Midlands. So, much simpler than trying to model point to point. And this is important. We are already seeing this kind of stratified tiers of locations, outposts, distribution centers, cargo centers, and system gateways that can be easily leveraged to move to a model of standardized routes over point to point. But what does that have to do with the price of potatoes? I'll get to that, but this video is already reaching my target length, so I'll need to make this a two-parter and talk a bit about our giveaways. We continue to make progress towards our goal of giving away the Zippy Zazzy Zaftigs ever the Zeus 2 cargo, as well as our larger goal, the magnificent multi-role mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video, just be a member for automatic entry, or comment including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the coincidental shared location name between CIG and this video's sponsor. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Raise Guide.